PSD with you, tutorials and gaming. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Again, we'll be testing on the HP Compaq DC5700. And I won't go through the install of FreeBSD because I've shown it before uh, and we'll boot into an already configured uh, setup. And the system was configured to use UFS and I just simply copied over the configs from my existing main system. The video driver is an Intel and I'll be using the Motive window manager as the desktop. One thing I particularly love about Motive window manager is because all the configurations are contained in one file, just copy that file over into your new computer, instantly set up all your key bindings, your menus, all there. So you can replicate it among systems really easily. I'm going to log in using StarTex. Uh, I'm not going to use a login manager. Again, I apologize for the shaky cam. Uh, I am trying to get a screen capture device. Right, and uh, we're into a basic setup. We'll be showing this one again later, uh, but for now, we're going to go back to a plain one, a uh, plain desktop, and we'll be reviewing and looking at the performance of some software on it. A particularly nice uh, wallpaper, I think. Here's a bonus. Here's a quick look at my main system that I'm using. Um, there's not much to see. It's just a plain Motive Window Manager uh, FreeBSD machine on two displays. And that's it really. And this is what I've used for the last two years. So the memory usage when you first start up is a, a very meager 160, 165 megabytes. 161. And yeah. And that's with simple screen recorder moving. It's very nice. But first we'll install Firefox. As you know, FreeBSD, when you first install it, doesn't come with any third-party user land applications. So in order to browse the web, you're going to have to install Firefox. You could Chromium, but Firefox for now. There we go. And LibreOffice. I tend to usually use OpenOffice, but in this instance, to keep it all the same across all four videos, I'll use LibreOffice. I've set this particular um, session on the DC5700 in a similar way that I would uh, that I that I actually do on my main machine. Um, not all the software choices are there. There's a lot more on the main machine that I've installed over time. But the bare minimum is, is really what I'll show you in this video. So that's done. Right. So now this is the playing background. This is how it really was before I put the wallpaper on. So what we'll first do, we'll just go into the usual um, fantastic YouTube channel. Right, it's very good. So we'll minimize that. And it, on this particular setup, the minimized uh, windows and applications always go to the bottom right hand side, stack up on each other. Yeah, I think it's perfect for my workflow. And our LibreOffice. There you go. It's a little bit slower loading than uh, most things, but then again, it is a large program. I minimize that. Now we're just going to have a look at the memory again. 
They're running but minimised, so, you know. Uh, 707 megabytes, thereabouts. Or 700 on average. Not bad at all. I think this is the the lightest uh, of all of them. I mean, again, yes, I'm using a very extreme light uh, window manager. And there's not much running in the background, but still, very impressive. Now we're going to test a few games. Now these games are not fantastic. They're not, you know, they're not AAA games by any stretch of imagination. The most of them are free. Uh, open Arena. We'll test the first one out. Um, the video hardware on this computer is not fantastic. Um, so I don't expect great shakes. But it's not too bad considering. I think it does run a little bit slower than it did on uh, overall performance on Nomad BSD. But that's no problem. Next up we'll run... Ooh. Zephula? I can never pronounce that. Yeah, this is a very uh, simple platform. It's just really just to show you that the simple games run best. But it is such a simple game that it's really difficult to tell whether it actually runs perfectly. Uh, Zaz, which I've covered in the video before. I forget which puzzle uh, game it's actually based on, but there's variations knocking around. Yeah, this runs as you expect it to run. It runs perfectly not that I'm actually any good playing it but uh, there you go we'll just get out of that one and Super Methane Brothers now this is like an Amiga style game to me it's um Brings about some wonderful memories of uh, playing similar games. Again, I'm not particularly good at it. And unfortunately, I pressed the uh, two-player mode one, but we'll get a, you can get an idea of what it looks like and how it performs. So I have no idea what I'm doing, and uh, we'll just come out of that. But the main thing I wanted to show you in this particular one, ah, there she is again, is I wanted to show some of the more serious programs that were running on the machine. So there you got your web browser. Uh, there's MUT for your email. And this is what I use on my, my main machine anyway. And Chromium, if, you, if you're so inclined. I know a lot of people don't like Chromium. But, you know, it's fine. For compatibility for some websites, it's it's a must. So we'll come out of them. And other internet applications. Uh, there's FileZilla, of course. When push comes to shove, I will use the command line versions of uh, an FTP, but I do prefer FileZilla. Some office-based ones. Uh, first would be TED. It's a, a Motive-based uh, word processor or, or text editor. I like it. It's a, it's a bit too simple or plain for some people, but it gets the job very well done. And I do like uh, Motive-based programs. LibreOffice Writer, of course. There you go. It's pretty much uh, the de facto standard for open source word processors. Uh, spreadsheet, calc, if you uh, if you need this. I find myself using spreadsheets a lot less than I used to do. I, I don't know why that is. But it's there. I know there's smaller versions. 
but I'm just showing you the, the, the ones that I have on my machine. And Nedit. Uh, it's another text editor. It's got a, a ton load of features uh, that you can do with it. And Plan. Plan is something I use uh, almost daily. In fact, I do use daily. It's, it's a fantastic calendar and uh, planner. Brilliant. Right, we're going to get some um, some art done, or some more creative stuff. Use GIMP. A lot of Linux distros don't include GIMP anymore, which is a shame. Uh, but I always I always install it. It's one of the first things I install. So it runs perfectly fine on this old computer. It runs very well, actually. Gonna do a bit of scribbling, blah 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 blah. Eat your art out, Picasso. Looks like a sheep. Huh. Right. What next? Uh, yeah. Inkscape. Now, Inkscape is an invaluable tool I use for um, doing video graphics and thumbnails. Absolutely invaluable. Probably one of the best uh, vector art packages I think I've used. Um, I've used some commercial ones too, but this one is, is to me, it's, it's a really good, comfortable fit. And you can achieve some great effects with it. I'm just messing around here using some gradients and the 3D cube gradients. Quite like that one, that's nice. Oh, that's even better. I like that. And just uh, stretch that out and then move it across. Lovely, lovely. There you go. Yeah. Right. We're going to uh, Audacity. Audacity is another one. It's an invaluable tool uh, I'll use on every video. It's... um. These things are, are, are wonderful. These, these are worth their weight in gold. They really are. I know there's a lot of commercial uh, programs that people prefer, and that's fine. Some of them commercial ones, you know, they, they will do things that the open source ones can't do. Scribus is something I used to use a lot uh, in the old days of um, user groups, etc. You know, for flyers or posters, etc. So I don't use as much as I used to do, but it's there, and it's not really changing all this time. So um, yeah, Scribus is Scribus. You know, you got basic shapes and polygons, etc., and you just put it on there and drag it across, and bang, you can flow your text around it or in it. Very good. Right, uh, did a little here. Muse score. Yeah, that's brilliant. Now, this one is something I run on a, another machine, uh, another FreeBSD box I've got. And the kids, they, they use it for their school uh, music homework. And it's brilliant. It, it works perfectly. I hook up to a MIDI keyboard and you can control it from there. You can get a flaky sometimes with the uh, the MIDI controller, but you know, it's, when that when when that happens, they just save it as a file and uh, transport it to school and play it on the Windows box. Right, next one is mm, yeah, LibreCAD. Um, it's another one that I've, I've played around with a little bit. It's something I I recommended to my um, colleague of mine who wanted to look at this look at this lot I, I've no idea what this is meant to be it's just squiggles oh I hope I don't draw anything rude uh, I recommend this to a colleague of mine who who wanted a um, very quick uh, piece of CAD software I recommended it and it fulfilled his needs so you can't get better than that right okay next on is a little, little, uh, yeah. Caden Live is another tool I use every day, or for every video, of course. I used to use OpenShot. 
An upshot was is a fantastic piece, but I found it to be extremely unstable. So I'd get to a point where every time I'd make a change, it would crash it. Uh, Wicked in Live w works fine for me. I'm not going to show anything on that one. And Sweet Home 3D. Uh, this is one I've covered a long time ago. Um, it's a very intensive program, so it's not going to run perfect, you know, smoothly on this old machine, but it does work. Uh, okay. It does work, and I'm just going to load in a uh, predefined. If I can remember to put it in. Yeah, there you go. It's not the fastest on this old machine, but it, it does work. There is some problem with the menus coming up at the top, but I think that's just more in the nature of the uh, the program, which I think is Java based. I'm not sure. Yeah. So that works. It's not the fastest, but if you needed at a push to uh, do this particular type of thing, you could uh, you could do it on this old machine. I'm really pushing the old machine now. I don't think it was ever really meant for that. But if you do a bit of um, web creation or programming, Bluefish is uh, an invaluable tool as well. And if you want to do some uh, fourth, people still do. And there you are. There's another interpreter. So you got two different interpreters, really. I used to do a lot of fourth in the old days. No, Jupiter Ace. If anyone remembers that, leave a comment. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And Telegram. Telegram works fine. I'm not going to log in, but it works perfectly fine. It's a, a Linux application. Right, let's have a look at the memory after running these few things. Oh, 262 currently running. So there's a little bit in reserve. Uh, there's 2.6 gigs uh, in reserve in memory, which means that if you ever need to run them things again, they'll start up instantly. And if not, then the system will use it when needed to. But yeah, but that's not too bad at all. And what's the best free BSD based OS to run on the DC5700? Ghost BSD? The default desktop is heavy, very heavy. Project Trident, complexity of Lumina can put some people off. Nomad BSD, it's a little bit complicated to install. And FreeBSD, you want to get the base OS. And that's its strength. While I've given the negatives to all of them uh, for the position that I've put them in, they all have positives. And I thought I'd just list the negative. The negatives, you know, it, it can be what defines someone's use of uh, the OS. Um, Ghost BSD, the official supported release, comes with uh, Mate. And on this old computer, and I am not judging it in the sense of an actual review or the OS itself, because it's a very capable OS. But on this particular old computer, this 5700, it's... Um, the Mate desktop, which is the official one, I'm not talking about the XFCE, which is a community-based uh, one. The Mate one was very sluggish. I mean, it did struggle a little bit, and that's just the desktop on this old machine. So I really wouldn't put Ghost PSD on the old machine. Project Trident, uh, well, that was very. It was very nimble. Um, it's a QT based OS. It runs a flux box underneath with the customized uh, shell on top. But a lot of people are not used to Lumina. And I'm, I might do some videos in the future looking uh, more in depth of Lumina and how to get the best out of it. But a lot of people don't like Lumina because it's they describe it as ugly, they describe it as uh, complicated. I, I love Luna. I think it's a very well, it's a well thought out idea. The execution of it, you can't judge what it is now from what the developers want. Because its true form really would have come in version 2 whenever we get that. Um, version 1 was to get things up and going. But hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll soon see version 2, in which case everything's going to be rewritten from the ground up and you'll get the proper experience. 
So Project Trident was nimble, but it's the complexity of Lumina can put people off. Nomad BSD, well, Nomad BSD is a wonderful, I, you know, what the devs have managed to achieve in such a small time, uh, I think we're only at 1.2 at the moment, it's incredible. I mean, they've, they've implemented many things, and the ability to install onto a hard drive is a masterstroke, really. I mean, because you have a truly portable OS that can be carried around on um, your USB stick, <laughs> which in itself is brilliant. But then you can install it actually to a hard drive, and you get a very quick and very responsive uh, operating system of a FreeBSD one, FreeBSD 12 based on um, OS. And if you are into uh, aesthetics, you get a wonderful looking desktop. It's a modern looking desktop with modern theming, if that's if that's your thing. Um, I, I loved it. I thought it was extremely good. And I'm going to be putting that um, as the OS of choice on a laptop. I'm going to do a series of videos soon uh, looking at uh, trying to get Wi-Fi going on the laptop. But that's going to be the last one I put on and I will keep it on there. Because I, I actually know my BSD is a wonderful um, OS. But uh, I have to put FreeBSD as number one. Um, FreeBSD is what I use all the time. It's the base of all these uh, versions, all these OSs. I know that Project Trident and GhostBSD are based on true OS, but that in itself is based on uh, FreeBSD 13. So, for me, FreeBSD offers extreme flexibility. You can build, if you have a, a monster of a computer, and it's, it's a beast of a system, you know, it's, it's got thread rippers and cores and, and so much RAM and all that kind of things, you could build yourself a wonderful uh, experience or system with that. If you're putting this onto a laptop, uh, again, you, 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 you can tailor FreeBSD for that. If you put it onto an old piece of um, hardware like I'm doing now with the 5700, with built-in Intel graphics, you you can tailor it for that. So it's, it's very flexible, and that's why um, you you see all these different versions of uh, BSDs that are kind of like tailored for different use. You know, Ghost BSD is a general purpose Ubuntu of the free BSD world, as it were. It wants a, a, an easy to use user set up from the, from the start. Project Trident to me seems like a workstation OS. Um, it's functional and it gets the job done. Nomad BSD again is a, is a mobile one. Uh, very responsive because you have to be really if you're if you're going to be on a, a USB stick. So each one of them uh, has been created from the sort of like the foundation of FreeBSD. It, it, it does allow extreme or, or flexibility. So for me, FreeBSD, the base OS, it can be off point to people. You know, they start up and all you get is a flashing cursor and you have to do it yourself. So I put that as a negative, but it's really not a negative. And that's why I would put it at number one, because you can tailor it to old hardware. Um, you slap on a very lightweight window manager. Like you say, in this case, I put um, Motive Window Manager on. You could put FVWM, you could put Openbox, Fluxbox, which, whichever. And then you install the, uh, the the programs that you want, just the ones that you want, if you wish. And there you go. You've just got a, an extremely fast, responsive system for its age. And if you were on an extremely tight budget or you were buying them in for... Uh, a charitable organization or anything like you know, a community organization you you have a system which can be locked down configured as how you want it brilliant so i've waxed lyrical i've gone on a little bit but yeah so there you are free bsd nomad bsd project trident and ghost bsd and one thing about free bsd which um oh god he ain't finished yet one thing about free bsd which uh, made me put it as number one is that you can use it as a server os which i've not really covered in these videos. GhostBSD really is not a server OS. Um, it'd be too heavy. Uh, Project Trident, again, I suppose you could. It's not too bad. But it's really meant to be a, a, a desktop. Uh, Nomad BSD is, is a desktop. It's not really a server OS. Uh, but then, yeah, I suppose you could do with all of these. But, you know, in the, in the degree of um, 
responsiveness and, and performance on an old piece of hardware, then it, it, they really wouldn't do. But FreeBSD, if you didn't want to put a GUI on it, didn't want to put a window manager on it, and you just wanted to use it as a server, turn it into a it turned this old DC5700 into a uh, a mail server, uh, a proxy cache. You could turn it into a, a PFSense box. PFSense based on FreeBSD, of course. You could turn it into a, a, a NAS server. You put free NAS on it, again, based on FreeBSD. Well, you know. And, or just a, an NFS, a network file share, if you wish. Um, so I've, I haven't covered them ones. I mean, the video will be too long, but I haven't covered them things. And yet you could do that with FreeBSD on the computer. So, just for free, uh, sheer uh, flexibility, FreeBSD f wins hands down on putting on uh, old hardware. It gives you ultimate flexibility and you don't have to throw away the old box. Brilliant. And I think when I bought this computer off eBay, I think it, uh, it cost me about £20, which is about, what, $25? It's nothing. It's uh, pocket change, almost. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. If you want to see more videos like this, then hit that like button. And to make sure you don't miss out, please consider subscribing as this really helps me help you.